Thank you for joining. In the previous three lessons, we discussed explicit model validation using the model status valid attribute and implicit model validation using the API controller attribute, along with various model attributes provided by NetCore 7. In this lesson, we will create our own custom validation attribute using the validation attribute class and the isValid method. Let's imagine we have a custom business rule in the banking complication that involves intricate logic specific to our application's needs, such as validating a combination of properties or checking against external services. In such cases, creating a custom validation attribute allows us to encapsulate this logic within the attribute itself. To implement a custom model validation attribute, we need two items. Firstly, it's a class that inherits from the validation attribute abstract class. As you may recall, all attributes we used for model validation in the previous lessons, such as required, string length, and so on, generally inherit from the validation attribute class. This class serves as a base class for creating custom validation attributes. In other words, Custom classes that inherit from the validation attribute abstract class can be applied to properties in our models. This allows us to enforce specific validation logic and serve as constraints. The second item we need is the isValid method. This method is part of the validation attribute class. When creating a custom validation attribute, we override this method to provide our own validation logic. The purpose of the isValid method in the context of this lesson is to implement custom validation logic. When an instance of an object is being validated, the framework calls this method to determine whether the value of a specific property or parameter is valid based on the rules defined in our custom attribute. Now let's discuss the parameters. The first parameter, which is the value object, represents the value to validate. When we apply our custom validation attribute to a property or parameter, the value parameter contains the value of that property or parameter received from a client. The validation context parameter provides information about the context in which the validation is occurring. It includes details such as the object being validated and the member like property, field, or parameter being validated. Additionally, this method returns a validation result object. This object indicates whether the validation succeeded or failed. In case of success, we typically return validation result success. If it fails, we return a validation result with an error message. Let's start by creating a folder. We can name it Custom Validators. In this lesson, we will create three different custom validation attributes. Since all three validation attributes will be related to credit cards, we can use a single file. We can name it credit card attributes. To implement all of them, two of the model state validation attributes will have constructors, meaning we will submit an explicit value from the attribute, while one validator will be a simple one without a constructor. Next, we need a class for the first attribute, and we can name it chosen credit card attribute. Please note that the suffix attribute in the class name will be omitted automatically by NetCore. This means that the attribute name will be chosen credit card. As we know, this class needs to inherit from the validation attribute abstract class. Let's add a constructor. It will receive the chosen credit card type as a string, and the parameter name will be chosen credit card. Next, we need a private field to store the value. And don't forget to press control period to implement the field automatically. Finally, we need the validation result class. The validation result class is part of the Net Framework's validation mechanism. It is used to communicate the results of the validation process. In the context of the isValid method in a custom validation attribute, validation result is employed to indicate whether the validation succeeded or failed and, if it failed, to provide an error message. The override keyword is used to indicate that our implementation in the chosen credit card attribute class provides a specific implementation for the isValid method. 
defined in the base class validation attribute. This allows us to customize the validation behavior for our specific attribute. The isValid method takes two parameters. The first one is the value received into the model from the client. And the second parameter is the context, which provides additional information about the validation operation if needed. The method body will contain an if check to confirm the chosen product. Inside this if statement, the value parameter will be referenced as the credit card variable. We will then compare the received value into the model against the explicit value passed into the constructor named chosen credit card, utilizing the third parameter for a case insensitive comparison. Next, we handle the return. If the validation condition fails, meaning the chosen credit card doesn't match the expected value, a new validation result instance is returned, indicating failure with a specific error message. On the other hand, if the validation condition succeeds, signifying that the chosen credit card matches the expected value, we return validation result success. This indicates success without any associated error message. No worries, at the end of the lesson I will explain the data flow once again in detail. Now let's implement the second validation attribute. To do this, we can copy and paste the attribute we just created and name the new one limited credit amount attribute. We can delete the constructor since this attribute won't accept any parameters. Instead, we will utilize an internal variable with a fixed amount, which we can name max credit amount, set at 1000. In the if check, we will change the value reference name to credit amount and it will be of the decimal type. Using the boolean logical operator AND, we can verify whether the credit amount received from the client is more than max credit amount. If so, we will provide an error message, stating that the credit amount must be limited to max credit amount. The method's return will remain unchanged, providing success. Similarly, for the third attribute we implement, we can copy the first attribute we created and paste it. Let's name it limited time offer attribute. Since it will be connected with a date, it will receive a value into the constructor, and thus we need to keep the constructor and rename it accordingly. Next, let's create a property of type DateTime and name it expiration date. Additionally, we need one more property to serve as the default error message holder displaying an error related to the transaction date expiry. The constructor will take a parameter of type int, and we can name it offer duration in month. The expiration date property will hold the value of the received argument converted into a date, which will be current date and time plus the number of month specified by the parameter offer duration in month. The if check will verify if the transaction date value received from the client is later than the value held by the expiration date property. If so, we generate an error using a validation result instance with a formatted error message. If an error message is provided in the model, it will be used. Otherwise, the default error message, which is default error message of the property we created, will be utilized. The zero placeholder in card list in the default error message will be replaced with the formatted expiration date. If the second if check is not triggered, we return an instance of the validation result class with a string success. Additionally, we can mark the value as a nullable type, and in this case, the isValid method can provide us an error message, stating that the data type of the transaction date property is invalid. Now, based on the attributes we created, we can add properties and decorate these properties using our custom attributes. The first property will be credit card used, and the attribute will be chosen credit card, which will pass an argument named my preferred card to the attribute class. The second model property we add, let's name it credit amount, and we can decorate it with the limited credit amount attribute. The third property can be named transaction date, and the attribute pertaining to this property will be limited time offer, with the offer validity set to one month. 
passed as an argument. Additionally, I will duplicate the limited time offer attribute and provide an option with the default error message, stating that the limited time offer has expired. As you may notice, all three custom attributes we implemented for the model properties are in accordance with class names, but without attribute suffixes. While it's a convention to include the attribute suffix in the class name for attributes, it's not strictly required when using the attribute in our code. The compiler is designed to recognize both forms with or without attribute suffixes. In Postman, I have this predefined model required JSON key value pairs in accordance with attributes. Let's send the request. As you can see, all properties have replied, mainly with errors, which is correct. This means model validation has passed the test successfully. Later in this course, I will extensively explain code tests. So far, I want to mention that code should be written in a way to create test cases that intentionally trigger errors, to ensure that the attribute behaves as expected. An error occurred, and as you can see, all implemented custom validators are triggered successfully. Now, as promised, I will explain the code and how the data flows. I'll take the last attribute we created, since it's the most extended in functionality that we have seen in this lesson. Before I start data flow explanation, just a reminder that I'm using words like decoration, decorate, decorator, and so on. If you are coming from, let's say, JavaScript, then in JavaScript the term decorator often refers to a design pattern. Where functions or methods can be wrapped or modified dynamically. It's commonly associated with higher order functions that take a function and return a new function with additional behavior. In C sharp it's different. Attributes in C sharp are often used to add metadata to program entities such as classes, methods, or properties. For example, serializable is an attribute that indicates that an object can be serialized. In our example, metaphorically speaking, the property transaction date inherits metadata from the limited time over attribute. When we apply the attribute to the property, or when we decorate the transaction date with the limited time over attribute, we are associating metadata or additional information with that property. This association is done internally by the framework. In summary, the attribute serves as a way to associate metadata and behavior with the property. The validation logic in the attribute is then executed when validation is triggered, providing a mechanism to verify the state of the model based on the metadata provided by the attribute. Now let's start from the very beginning with this combination of the transaction date property and the limited time offer attribute class. Internally, the limited time offer attribute is acting as a validator for the transaction date property. This is made possible by the validation attribute class and the Net Framework's internal validation mechanism. Now let's break down what happens. First, the limited time offer attribute is applied to the transaction date property. This is a way of associating metadata, in this case, validation rules with the property. Many aspects of this process are handled by the framework itself. Second, when validation is triggered, for example during a call to validator, a validation context is created. This context contains information about the object being validated, including its properties. Third, during the validation process, the framework recognizes that the transaction date property is decorated with the limited time offer attribute class. It then calls the isValid method of the limited time offer attribute for validation. Inside the isValid method, custom validation logic is performed. In this case, we check if the transaction date is later than the expiration date calculated based on the attribute's parameter, which is one month. If it is later, a validation error is returned. Finally, the validator method collects the validation results and you can check these results to determine if validation passed or failed. If there are errors, we can inspect these error messages for example in Postman or in DevTools. In summary, the limited time offer attribute is a way to encapsulate and enforce specific validation rules 
for the transaction date property. Now let's consider the data flow. When the framework detects a call to the property, in our example it's transaction date, the framework also notices the limited time offer attribute applied to the property, associating metadata and custom behavior with the property. Next, the limited time offer attribute class will receive two arguments. The first one is the explicit integer 1 that we pass from the model class. It will be passed into the parameterized constructor of the class. The second argument is the data we send from the client. In our case, it's a date in a string format sent from Postman. This date will be stored in the value property of the isValid method. The number 1 will be converted to a date format with an added 1 month, which we receive from the attribute, and subsequently it will be stored in the expiration date property. Inside the isValid method we override the default logic with our custom logic and verify if the value is in date-time format. If so, using C-sharp pattern matching statements and the is keyword along with the declaration pattern, we assign the value to the transaction date. Then using an if check we verify the required condition. Next, using the null call async operator we check if we have the error message. Since the error message was not passed from the model as this version of the attribute is commented out, the default message property will be used instead. And the zero placeholder receives the value of the expiration date. This is why in Postman we see this error message with the included date time we passed as a key value pair and added one month. In the next lesson we will explore the creation of custom validation attributes with multiple properties. Additionally, I will provide an explanation of the validation context class, including its available properties and methods. This class allows us to access information about the object being validated and the validation process. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!